Can I just say I miss carbs so much? <laughs> Hi y'all, welcome to 2021. Does it feel any different to you? The viewers have requested it over and over and over and over again, so we bring to you today another episode of Budget Eats. The theme for our Budget Eats today will be low carb. Low carb is the antithesis to my whole food existence. I can worship bread all my life. I'm so happy whenever there's bread. Soft, pillowy, dense but light. If you've watched me cook anything, you would know that I love my carbs. I love oatmeal, I love breads, I love sugar, I love fruits. I just, what am I without carbs? What am I without carbs? So, having said that, this will be baby's first ride around the low carb carousel. Do not get angry at me if I trip up and use one ingredient that's not actually low carb because I don't know. But you know what? Write me down in the comments below and let me know nicely that I f***ed up. When I think about low carb meals, I think about keto meals and I think about cream cheese, meats, nuts, oils, fat, just fat everywhere. A lot of those things are not budget friendly, but it turns out if you know, you're not keto, you're just simply low carb, there's a lot of veggies on the table. And you know what? Luckily for me, I found a lot of good deals. I hit up those dollar bins, I got my dollar bones. All right, so let's see everything that we got for under $25. Not too shabby. My main worry is that I usually use carbs to manipulate them into different forms. This week, I don't have any of those. But working with what we do have, walnuts, eggs, and cauliflower, probably can be toyed around with a little bit. This entire haul was $24.32. I came a little bit under budget. Probably should have used the remaining 50 something cents on, yeah, I don't know, scallions, but you know, too late, regrets. So for $24.32, here's everything that I got. We got half a pound of Borek cheese. It's a soft, crumbly, creamy kind of cheese. I love it. I don't know what we're gonna use it for, maybe topping. We also have a pound of walnuts, from the $1 Wonderland of three different stores. I got one bag of four zucchinis. I got a bunch of kale that's starting to yellow a little bit, but you know, the rest of the bag is fine. We can still use it. We got three bell peppers. We got one bag of shishito peppers. I also got one sleeve of garlic for a dollar. I also got two bags of $1 meat bones. We're gonna make some delicious broth out of that. We're gonna pull the meat off, reserve it, save it for something. It's gonna be delicious. This week, for whatever reason, cauliflower was expensive. I saw one that was like $5.99 per head, and then I found a smaller head for $1.99. So we got one head of cauliflower, and we got a bunch of parsley. As far as meats went this week, I really didn't want to buy just meat. I wanted to try organ meats because I think they're underutilized, and I think we should try to incorporate them into our diet a little bit more. With that in mind, I got a pound of chicken hearts, and that mysterious package of spleen, which is very bloody. It's been dripping everywhere in my refrigerator and I'm terrified and I think we should cook it today so that blood can stop seeping into every corner of my house. And the first thing that popped up when I Googled how to cook spleen is this article from The Atlantic. Spleen tastes like the boiled, grisly flotsam of a prehistoric monster like a fictional character butchered and left to rot in an ogre's cellar. Are you excited yet? Because I am. An ogre cellar. I've never been to one. Found some really good deals for really sad eggs. Then we got two small cans of coconut milk, thinking maybe we can make a curry of some sort out of them. And then I got half a pound of dried soybeans. Yes, I know we're not using the happiest eggs or the happiest meat, but we are on a budget and sometimes life you just gotta make your compromises. But maybe we should think about what compromises we're making every day. First day is always one of the busiest days, so we're gonna do a lot of prep today. We are going to be making our bone broth because that has to simmer for at least six hours for maximum flavor infusion. I want the broth to be milky and creamy and smooth and silky and flavor blasted. To keep the flavors basic for now, I'm just going to go ahead Blanch the meat. Once it comes up to a simmer, we're gonna dump out the water, rinse out the meat, fill it with fresh water, and let it boil with just a little bit of salt. No other spices needed at this point.
After blanching once, you'll notice that your second boil will be much clearer to begin with. It's a very good thing. It means you got rid of all the impurities and the blood, you rinsed off the meat, and now you're starting with a pure and simple bone broth. As your day progresses and you see that your broth is getting scummy on top, just scrape that scum off with a spoon and throw it out. No scum broth. While our broths are boiling, I'm going to start thinking about meal number one. I know that among the low carb crowd, zoodles are a crowd favorite. I don't have a spiralizer. So we're gonna use the next best thing and that's a knife. I'm just gonna make some cranky looking noodles today. Zoodles. And to go with our zoodles, I think we should do some kale walnut pesto. We're going to take half of our walnuts, we're gonna toast them at around 350 for maybe 10 to 15 minutes, depending, until they're nice and golden. I love it when walnuts are a little bit toastier than you want them to be because we're putting them in pesto and I want that to be extra, extra toasty. So when you have the kale stems, I'm just going to trim off the dirty end of it like that and uh, we'll save it for another use. As with all dark leafy greens, I like to give them a second rinse after I've prepped them just to make sure there's no grit hiding in the curly, curly kale leaves because grit while good in character, is not good in a bite of food. I'm going to save some of the smaller leaves of kale for our pesto and the bigger leaves, maybe they can come in handy later. We're also going to be washing, rinsing our parsley. I'm going to be stripping the parsley as well because the tender stems are gonna be perfect inside this pesto. My favorite way of storing herbs for best freshness is to rinse them completely clean, shake them dry, and then put them in a paper towel lined container or baggie just to keep that little moisture locked in. I'm also gonna go ahead, rinse off our soybeans, soak them in cold water overnight so that tomorrow we can use them in something. Our broth has been simmering for about two hours. I'm going to pull the meat off the bones, set them aside for a later use. We want the bones to get really soft, give up all of their marrow and flavors, but we do not want the meat to taste completely bland. So that's why we're picking them off right now. I think we got a pretty good amount of meat off those bones. Should make a nice hefty dinner sometime this week. For our pesto, I'm just gonna put into my blender walnuts, ripped kale, all of our parsley stems, and a grated clove of garlic. We're gonna throw in some salt, drizzle in a little bit of olive oil until that consistency is pesto-y and then we'll taste it. If you think it needs a little bit more seasoning, add in more salt. If you think it needs to be a little bit oilier, add in a little bit more oil. Or in my case, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of water to loosen it up so that we don't blow our budget on olive oil I didn't buy. Cause I know you guys are gonna call me out on that, aren't you? I'm also going to be adding in a splash of vinegar for acidity and a little bit of cracked black peppercorns. <laughs> I feel healthier already looking at the amount of fiber and healthy fats in this. For our zoodles, I'm gonna wash my zucchini. I'm going to chop off the ends and then I'm gonna slice them into noodle-esque things. I'm gonna make sure that I'm peeling off all these spots that don't look so hot. And once the insides look completely clear and milky, uniform colored, we're good to go. So like I said, noodle-esque. I think we're testing metaphysics here. In order to inject maximum flavor in there, I'm going to go with a cast iron skillet, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of salt. We're waiting until the garlic gets nice and golden and toasty, and then we're gonna throw in the zoodles. If you pile too much on, they're gonna steam, they're gonna get a little, I don't know. They're fine, they'll, they'll be cooked either way. 2020, no, 2021, I'm not picky. As soon as each batch of noodles comes out of the pan, I'm gonna hit them with a couple tablespoons of that pesto. While they're warm, they will absorb the flavors way better than if the noodles were cold. And we obviously can't leave this out, can we? We're gonna add some of this for Aaron.
I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of MSG because the flavor is just a little lacking. The MSG will give it that extra oomph, you know? And for some added protein value, I think I'm just gonna serve it with some sunny side up eggs. Aaron, yeah. la dinner is served. Cool. <laughs> Look at this egg. Look at it jiggle. Hi, June. Ah. I heard you made food. Is this legal? Egg waterfall. Ooh. That's a good egg. That's a good egg. egg. Yeah. Here you go, bud. Nice. This is beautiful. Have you ever had zoodles before? Mm-hmm. Do you like zoodles? No, I hate them. Oh. Noodles, specifically wheat noodles, are among the best foods in the world. Correct. Trying to make something that imitates them is bound to fail. Uh, zucchini noodles are slimy. They don't have a chew. They uh, basically failed to impersonate noodles in all the important respects. 8.9. <gasps> no freaking way. Yeah, because... Um, you just said you hate zoodles. Yes, but I'm rating it for the dish itself. I mean, the sauce is like clinging to the noodles, which I feel like is yeah, pretty good. That's a good point, too. Look yeah. at that. Ooh, chunky boy for you. Normally, I say MSG is optional, but in this dish, I feel like it's a quite crucial addition. Even with the nuttiness of the walnuts and the herbiness of the parsley stems, the flavor just wasn't quite up to par with what I expect out of a tasty meal. So that MSG really brings everything together. The nuttiness, the nice sweetness of the zucchini, the yolkiness of the eggs, and then all of that salty umami goodness just gets married into one being. I don't know if I would give myself a nine out of 10, but it's a solid eight out of 10. This bowl of noodles, pretty good. Passable. Nice job. To end the night, I'm gonna put my pesto away in the fridge, and then I think we should taste the spleen. Let's see if it does taste like the gristle of a prehistoric animal found in an ogre's cellar. I hope you're ready to see some blood. I'm gonna guess this is not edible. Oh God. You ready to taste this? Raw? Like oh, that crazy guy. It looks quite weird, doesn't it? It looks like a very shiny tongue. Ooh, gives me the heebie jeebies. If you happen to know what this is, please let me know down in the comments below. But uh, I'm just gonna throw it in the cast iron pan and see if it melts because if it's fat, we might as well save it, right? So this is not even the spleen, this is the shit attached to the spleen. Yes, correct. I don't know is what it that is. Yet? No, we're just gonna hit it with the spleen. I hope we're gonna lose. Ooh, that it changed shrank. shape. <laughs> Why is everything so scary about the spleen? Salt. How much would I have to pay you to eat it? Oh, nothing. I'm gonna eat it right now. Everything about this terrifies me. Oh my gosh, it's alive. Um, it smells quite organy. I'll do it. I'm going for it. Okay. Is it cooked? Are we gonna die? June? Yeah. That tastes amazing. Seriously. Describe the taste. If it you can. tastes like uh, beef jerky, even though I know it's not beef and it's not jerky. It's like more hydrated beef jerky. It has a really nice, you know, sort of paleolithic meaty taste to it. Mm. Like no gaminess, no weirdness. It's really good. It is kind of like liver. Yeah. It's, Ooh! It's actually. I got a crunchy bit. Yeah, it's like liver, but like less strong, actually, like less pungent than liver. I don't know what the Atlantic article is talking about. Do we think this is like a gristly chicharron? Yeah, I think it's pretty gristly. I'm gonna let you see if that's chewable at all. It smells quite nice, like yeah. flavorful. Ooh. Okay, that's that's edible. I'm gonna keep that shit. Guys, spleen. It's the new meat. All that's left to do for us for tonight is to look at our broth. We are approaching our five and a half right now. I'm thinking the broth will be sufficiently milky, so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. 
what you're looking for when you're making bone broth is not only that that broth is rich and concentrated in flavor that it almost looks milky and opaque but that your bones are almost soft enough to break apart under the force of your fingers that's when you know all the marrow has leaked into the broth and all the flavor is in that liquid they should be soft enough to chew and if you're a freak like me you're gonna eat those bones calcium i'm going to strain out the bones i'm going to jar up the broth i'm going to slide it into the fridge once they're a little bit more room temperature and i'll see you guys tomorrow spleen time welcome to tuesday i went to sleep at around 4 a.m and my neighbors started playing very loud music at 7 30 a.m so that's where i'm at I'm going to try and cook a couple of meals today, but first things first, let's boil off some of those soaked soybeans we did yesterday. They look nice and plump and very smooth. So I think what I'm gonna do is boil half of these and then we're going to fridge the other half in a jar for later. Ease is the name of the game today for our soybeans in a pot of water. I'm gonna salt it, I'm gonna put some black pepper in it. I'm gonna cook the soybeans until they're crunchy but tender and fully cooked. Once you smell it, go ahead, stir it, and pick up one bean. Give it a taste. See if it tastes too crunchy. If it's not too crunchy, you're probably cooked. And I want a little bit of texture for this because I have an idea in mind. I'm going to go ahead and drain them, let them cool, set them aside until they are ready for their destination. While the beans are going, I'm thinking for lunch today, we can make some zucchini cake spleen sandwiches. For the sandwich, I'm imagining that we Slice the spleen really thin, stir fry it in garlic and salt, whatever spices we want, set that aside, and then we make our zucchini cakes. The zucchini cakes will essentially act as buns. For the kale chips, we're gonna preheat our oven to 325. We're going to tear our kale into bite-sized pieces. Kale chips work best when they're completely dry, that way they won't steam underneath the oil covering. So just go ahead and give them a pat with a paper towel until you know that all the leaves are bone dry. For about three cups of packed kale, I use about one tablespoon of olive oil and I'm just gonna use my hands to massage that all the way in, making sure that every curly crevice is covered with that oil. You can season your kale with whatever you want, but I'm going with about a half teaspoon of togarashi, which is a spicy Japanese chili pepper blend, as well as this herby seasoning that Aaron got from his cell phone company of all things. Why? I don't know, but it tastes amazing. We're gonna use it. And if you washed your kale well, which you should have, you can give it a taste right now to see if you like the seasoning. Adjust to your desired taste and then we'll bake. We're gonna spread it out on a baking sheet tray and we're gonna bake it probably 15, 20, maybe even 25 minutes, depending. The crucial thing here is you wanna make sure your kale is in one even layer. This will minimize steaming. It'll maximize crispiness. We're gonna be tossing it every 10 minutes or so, keeping an eye on it, making sure nothing is burnt. And then it should come out crispy and perfect and toasty and delicious. Those are pretty good. Those are very spicy. For our zucchini cakes, I'm gonna take our zucchini, I'm gonna trim away the bad spots, and then I'm gonna grate them. Once your zucchini butt looks like this, please stop grating because you don't want your fingers in the cakes. What I do instead is plop it on a cutting board and I trim it into tiny, tiny pieces to mimic the shredder. And then I'm going to season them with a little bit of salt. Toss, 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 and let them drain. The salt will draw some moisture. We're going to squeeze that additional liquid out. I'll also save the zucchini liquid because you just never know when you might want some salty zucchini juice, you know? Nice zucchini juice you got there, June. People in Manhattan would pay good money for that. It is a gorgeous color. Very green. Looks like a cocktail, doesn't it? Is it warm? Mmm! It's like cucumber juice. Zucchini juice. Well. It, it tastes a little salty. Actually. It is salty. Why is it salty? I add a salt in there to draw oh. the water out. Okay. You know, I feel healthy already. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <Yeah. laughs> we 
We're gonna season our zucchini cakes with some red pepper nice tasty, some of this, some of this, white pepper, mushroom powder, our BFF, and steak seasoning. Why not? I have it. My current thoughts are, wow, this looks very watery. Uh, it might not be a bread bun after all, it might just be an omelet wrap. In which case, we'll deal with it. Sometimes in life you make mistakes and uh, just gotta carry on with it. First things first though, I wanna utilize that fat layer on the spleen to coat our cast iron. We're gonna sear our spleen first. I'm gonna trim the fat so that it's easier to render. There is a membrane covering that spleen that might make it hard to chew or a little bit tough, so I like to slice it on the bias. That way you're cutting through that membrane and it shrinks as it cooks, not a problem. For our fat chicharrones, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of togarashi. Once that oil is nice and hot, we're gonna go in with some garlic. We're gonna throw the spleen in. We're gonna let them get nice and toasty, a little bit crunchy on the edges, pull them out, toss them with seasoning, and then we'll try to make this omelet wrap thingy. I'm gonna be using these spices in our spleen. You can use whatever you like. And that is pure flavor, baby. Might have oversalted it a tad bit, but man, that is delicious. Time for our questionable zucchini egg wrap. Very interesting. Guys, we have a very structurally unsound zucchini pancake thing going on. And I think what I'm gonna do to save it is just to make like a frittata. I'm gonna dump all of the batter in. We're gonna preheat our oven to 350. And then once it's preheated, we're gonna chuck that in and just wait until the eggs are barely set. Here are our kale chips, very nicely seasoned, very nicely crunchy. And here is our garlicky spicy spleen with our zucchini frittata. I put a little bit of parsley on top, you know, to make it garnishy. Doesn't it look beautiful? Did you pay $20 for this? So is this spleen, June? Yes. Exciting. Tell me what you think, chef. Thanks to our preview yesterday, I knew the spleen would be excellent, and mm -hmm. it is. And this is the zucchini frittata. Mm-hmm. Oh, big bite. Okay, wow. What's the chili powder on this? Togarashi. Nice. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, this is a great meal overall. I kind of love the different textures going on. Like the frittata is very soft and tender, almost falling apart, but it's pretty stable. It's almost like a egg pudding. And then the spleen mm -hmm. is kind of like, a tender liver, like it's yeah. not dry at all. It's a very moist liver. Mm -hmm. It has a very nice earthy taste, but it's not overpowering in its organiness. Mm -hmm. And it's just got like a nice little bounce to it. It's like a juicy bounce. I was going to say everything that you just said exactly the way you said it. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you know how the zoodles remind you of what you're missing? It's like, oh, these are fake noodles and they suck because mm -hmm. they're worse. This is just a great meal on its own, and it doesn't make me wish it wasn't low carb. It just is great low carb food. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you have a grade for me? Good job this is my grade. Do you have a number since we love numbers as a society? Good job out of 10. Are you for real? Mm -hmm. No more food for you. Go. <laughs> I forgot there are kale chips. After you eat these, can you actually give me a grade, please? 10 out of 10 for being perfect, minus 
Uh, two for being oversalted still. These are oversalted too? Oh. Oh no. My taste buds are broken. I'm gonna give myself a nine out of 10. It is a good meal. You shouldn't be afraid to let your food stand on its own. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to use seasonings, Aaron. I know. It happens, okay? I'm scared of high blood pressure. The silent killer. Well, you can stop eating. The silent oh. killer. What if I'm actually trying to kill him because he's freaking annoying? Probably a terrible way to do it though because I'm also gonna die of high blood pressure. Believe it or not, there's actually not a lot of recipes for spleen. Out of the very few recipes I did find, I found this Moroccan stuffed spleen. Usually it's stuffed with meat and rice and all of that jazz. But today I think we're gonna stuff it with some kale stems, kale leaves, garlic, and chopped up soybeans. I'm a little bit worried because I think the Moroccan version uses beef spleen, which is bigger. Our spleen is quite slim, quite fragile looking. I don't know if I will be able to tunnel my way through it without ripping it apart, but we'll try our best. This is the perfect way to use up our kale stems, which I will line up on the cutting board and I'm gonna chop into very tiny pieces. We're gonna throw that fat from the spleen into our pan, render it. We're gonna fish it out once it gets crackling. Then we're gonna throw our garlic and our kale stems in. We're gonna stir fry that until those look slightly golden, very, very tender. And then we'll throw in our kale leaves. We're gonna wait until those wilt get nice and toasty, glossy, dark, foresty green, and then we'll throw in our soybeans, oh so chopped. We're gonna wait until those soybeans get a little bit of color on them, and then we're gonna set it aside, let it cool off. I'm gonna be putting these flavorful spleen chicharrones back into that stuffing mixture. And I'll also be adding a teaspoon of this delicious togarashi. And then we're gonna try to split our spleen open without ripping it completely apart. I basically put about two tablespoons of filling inside the spleen and then I tried to squeeze it like you would a sausage or a tube of toothpaste just to guide the stuffing into the innermost part of the spleen, but halfway through it broke. So I don't think this is gonna work. Uh, let me think about this. So I think for the partially ruptured spleen, I'm gonna tuck the unfilled tail end of the spleen over to cover that hole. And then for the other one that I completely destroyed, I think I'm just gonna fillet it open, lay the filling down the middle, roll it up, and then try to pin it in place with toothpicks. And then we'll sear and bake, and hopefully it'll be kind of like a sausage-y thing. I'm going to preheat my oven to 375, and while that's preheating, we're gonna sear both sides in the cast iron skillet. Once the oven is preheated, we'll slide it in, we'll let it cook, internal temperature 160? I don't know, we'll see. So I baked the spleens for about 15 minutes, I took them out, temperature was well above 160, so I think we're clear. It looks very cooked, it looks very glazy, it looks very caramelized. I cleaned my pan, I dried it out, and then I dry roasted some of the shishito peppers until they got a little bit blistered, topped them with a little bit of salt, shook them around the pan so that they were all evenly charred, and then we're gonna eat. The one that I had really botched up didn't really cut very well. It kind of fell apart and got crumbly, but you know what? That's what parsley's for. You put enough parsley on top of anything, it starts to look good. The other one actually looks like a stuffed sausage. I'm pretty proud of myself. That plate is gonna go to Aaron. If you do make this recipe, please remember to take out the toothpicks because I almost forgot and I crunched my knife down to slice it and I hit a toothpick. So be sure that you take those little skewers out or things might get really ugly. What do you think we have here? Spleen. Okay, what else? Chilies. Shishito, but okay. These are chilies. Mm-hmm. I eat the special one first. Mm -hmm. The only orange one in the whole bunch. Mm-hmm. For you, because you're special. Mmm. Spicy. Yeah, it's nice. I love all three variations of the spleen so far. I think my favorite was still just the first one we did, because that reminded me of very primitive, you know, prehistoric food. But this one I think is the most refined and elegant. Look at my handiwork, Aaron. Mm -hmm. You stuffed it really beautifully. I know. And I'm it so tastes impressed. great. Yeah. What do you taste? What do you think is in there? 
Uh, right now, I pretty much only taste chili because that wasn't that bite was hot. <laughs> okay, the shishitos are kind of spicy, and then this is kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice balance. Is that because the walnuts? You think? No walnuts. Oh, what are the nuts in this? Soybeans. Soybeans. Mm -hmm. Oh, it tastes almost uh, nutty. Let me show off my plate. The yellow bits are soybeans. Nice. Mm. I really like the sweet earthiness of the soybeans in there. The texture is nice too. Yeah, I really love the artistry of this dish. It's very well thought out, well put together, well crafted. Thank you. 9.2. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Thanks, chef. Thank you, chef. That was way higher than I expected. Do I get a Michelin star? Do you really want a Michelin star? No, absolutely not. <laughs> get him out of here. So far, I love everything about this dish, but it's lacking a little bit of richness, I would say. I agree. I don't think spleen is very fatty at all. There's like none of that fatty richness, but we do have something. Mayo. Now, I think Kewpie mayo has a little bit of sugar in there, but I think it has the perfect creamy texture to like make this potentially a 9.3. Look at the beautiful drizzle. This is the world's best mayo. Kewpie, when are you going to sponsor me? Okay, that's good. Thank you. I love my mayo. How much does it improve it? I think by half a point. Okay. At least. What do you think? It's so good. We both had the same thought. Mayo, man. Mm -hmm. Mayo saves everything. It's so good. Nine point <gasps> four. <Wow! laughs> And thus, we conclude our Spleeny Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed these two recipes, and I hope that I survive until tomorrow morning to bring you yet more budget meals. Wednesday. I managed to get eight hours of sleep last night, but still somehow feel just as tired as four hours of sleep. Life. Day three, let's cook some chicken hearts. We still have some of that kale that's continuing to yellow, so I think where we're gonna make for meal number four is kale cups with chicken hearts. If you've ever had lettuce cups, similar idea. For our massage kale, I think I'm just gonna dump all of our remaining kale in a large bowl, top it with a drizzle of olive oil, and then go in with some black pepper and this herby salt. I think instead of using normal salt, we might as well flavor it a little bit so that there's flavor on every single element of the dish. So these two will be. You'll notice that the longer you rub them, the more transparent the leaves will turn. This is because we're essentially bruising them by massaging the leaves. The longer you massage them, the more transparent they'll turn and the more tender they will be. Because the chicken hearts have been sitting in my fridge for about four days now, they're starting to smell a little not so fresh. They're definitely not bad, but they're starting to develop a little bit of that like slight marini fishiness. So what I think I'm gonna do is rinse them off in the sink, slightly squeeze your chicken hearts dry because that aorta will let in some water, squeeze that all out, and then I'm going to blanch them very quickly in salted water, just so that we can get some of that impure tastes out. After about a minute and a half to two minutes of blanching, I fished them out, I divided them into two batches so that we have a little bit for each meal, as is half cooked. They currently smell like the darkest, richest meat chicken. For our chicken heart sear, I'm going to slice up some garlic. I'm going to cut up our hearts. I'm going to also dice up some shishito peppers for flavor. I sliced off the fatty ends with the aortas attached. I'm going to plop these in before I plop in the rest of the chicken hearts so that they get an extra chance to crisp up and get toasty. So in a cast iron skillet over medium heat, we're gonna melt some of our bone broth fat and then we're going to plop in our garlic, wait for that to get a little bit golden before we go in with the shishito peppers. We're gonna let the peppers get a little bit more wilty, a little bit tender, then chicken hearts. And then when you think the chicken hearts are maybe about half minute away from being ready, we're gonna go in with some spices. In my case, I'm gonna go in with a little touch of salt, some cumin seeds, black and white pepper, and maybe some togarashi on top just for Aaron's spicy oils. Tastes pretty good as is, but I think it needs a touch more salt, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of steak seasoning. 
For a little more protein in our cups, I'm going to go ahead and make some soft scrambled eggs. We're gonna keep this very simple. Cast iron skillet, medium heat, olive oil. We're going to break all of our eggs into a bowl. We're going to scramble them with a little touch of salt. We're going to pour that egg mixture into the cast iron pan. As you know, pull your eggs off the heat way before you think they're done, especially if you're using a cast iron skillet, which retains a lot of heat. Once your scrambled eggs are still glistening and a little bit loose and jiggly, transfer them to a cool bowl so that they don't carry over cook anymore. To assemble our cups, we're going to take a little tiny leaf of massage kale, we're going to plop our scrambled eggs on top, we're going to top it with more chicken hearts, and then a little crumble of cheese. Maybe a little everything bagel seasoning on top. There you have it. Kale cups. I stuffed it all in my mouth. Nice. Massage kale with herb seasoning. Yep. Eggs. Soft scrambled eggs, yep. Chicken hearts. Chicken hearts, yep. And cheese. And cheese, yes. And how many carbs are in this? I don't know. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I feel like a kid. <laughs> I think the fact that I'm spending more time eating it than talking about it means I like it. <gasps> That's good. I like that. Mm -hmm. It is kind of mushy, mm -hmm. but it's fun. Ew. I think this is maybe the healthiest thing you've made. No. So far. They're all healthy. And this one is especially healthy. It's uh, protein and eggs and cheese on a bed of kale. It is a seven... Point eight. The lowest one. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good. I was not respecting It's that. not bad. It's good. But, you know, it's not great. Is everything you make going to be great? Are you really upset I said your food is good? <laughs> I just really like this one. Okay. I'm going to rate it a 9 out of 10. You have to commit to a large bite. A very large bite every time you eat some of this. But if it was a salad, you could eat it at your leisure. Did you take two points off because it's not easy to eat? For meal number five, I'm thinking we do something with the bone broth. I think we should make a chicken heart meatball soup. Because I already parboiled the chicken hearts a little bit, I don't know if their current form will hold together as a meatball, but we're gonna try our best. For the meatballs, I'm going to try to food process those chicken hearts along with some cooked soybeans, grated garlic, diced shishito peppers, <laughs> parsley leaves, and some raw walnuts. <laughs> Along with gochugaru and some mushroom powder, just to season it a little bit. We're gonna try to food process all of that into a smooth-ish paste, and then we're gonna make some mini meatballs, if the mixture holds. It looks pretty damn good. And it smells pretty good too. To make our soup even more substantial, for our veggies, I'm going to use the stem and the leaves of the cauliflower. I like to give the whole head a rinse, and then I trim off this very bottom portion where it's pretty grody. And then I sliver off the florets from the body of the stalk. Then I chop the stalk up into little bite-sized pizzas. Piece, pieces, pieces. My original plan for these meatballs was to shape them and then sear them in the pan before plopping them into our broth, but they're actually quite sticky, almost like the consistency of pate. So I think we're just gonna go ahead, put a pot over medium heat, heat up some of our bone broth fat. We're gonna sear some veggies and garlic in there. If you add the salt as you add each additional ingredient, each additional ingredient will get a little bit of sodium on there. As the veggies cook, I'll add in some salt, a little MSG, along with some fennel seeds, some homemade six spice, the last bit of my ground citron peppercorns, and white pepper. As soon as I smell the spices hitting my nose, I'm gonna go in with the broth. We're gonna scrape down the bottom of the pot to make sure all of the fawn is being lifted, and then we're gonna wait for that broth to come up to a boil. Because we stewed this bone broth for so long, there's so much collagen and gelatin in there, and it's basically like jelly. <laughs> Once we're at a boil, we can start spooning our meatballs into the soup. I'm doing about a rounded heaping tablespoon here. Because the meatball mixture is so sticky, I like to dip my spoons in cold water first for a clean release. That 
that's pretty spicy. I think those shishito peppers are so spicy this time. What's going on? I'm not really sure how long they've been in there for, but I think they're really, really, really cooked. They're very opaque, they're floating to the top, the broth looks flavorful, everything smells like it's become married together in holy matrimony. And we are ready to eat. Dude, this is beautiful. Oh my god, that's incredibly that's good. That's pretty good. <laughs> This is already my favorite thing you made for the week so far. No way. Mm -hmm. Well, bone broth anything I feel like you love. Mm -hmm. You've been cooking a lot of stock, both for work and just for your own personal use. Mm -hmm. And I think this is your finest work yet. Whoa. How's a meatball? Great, because it's chicken heart and not just, you know, standard meat meatball. Mm -hmm. The flavor is more complex. It's not as fatty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a very lean meatball, so it's kind of held loosely together. Mm -hmm. The flavor of everything is great. This is just pure flavor magic, this bowl. Yeah. Do you like the soybeans in there? Yeah. Do you like the veggies? I love everything here. Uh, I already know my rating for this. It's a 9.9. <gasps> what? Mm -hmm. No way. It's incredibly good. These are just the most heart wholesome, heartening, soul warming flavors you can have. And the only thing that would make it a perfect 10, wheat noodles. I like the kick of the shishitos. It's a very nice, mild, fragrant kick. It's not overpowering. It kind of lingers around, but it doesn't really like beat you up, you know? Aaron just gave out one of the highest scores ever, I think, in the Budget Eat series. So, God damn it, I'll take it. Welcome to today. Today is Thursday. Today is also the day that I acknowledge and accept that this fatigue will never go away. And we shall work through it. Today, I'm thinking we cook our cauliflower. Now, a popular low-carb cauliflower dish is usually riced cauliflower, and I see great potential for us. However, one of the worst things about riced cauliflower is when the rice grains are too fine, and then they just turn into mush. So to avoid that, I'm gonna be using a grater. I'm gonna use a box grater. I'm gonna use the biggest hole in the grater. I'm gonna hope that we end up with like Israeli couscous type size cauliflower rice. And then I think for our first meal of the day, we're gonna do some cauliflower fried rice. How's that sound? Sounds great. Let's go, let's do this. I need tea. Okay, so the shredder didn't do as great of a job at preserving that large chunkiness as I hope, but it's not bad. Rising cauliflower is a really great idea if you want your entire apartment to smell like farts. I'm not really sure if this will make a difference or not, but instead of oiling my skillet to fry up the cauliflower rice, I'm going to oil the cauliflower rice right now and toss it. I'm also going to season the mixture right now with black pepper, white pepper, and ground cumin. I'm going to hold off on the salt because the salt will draw out the water and I don't really want a soggy mess in the bowl right now. I think because cauliflower lacks a lot of the fragrant, toasty, carby notes of rice, I'm going to go ahead and make a spiced walnut topping with our toasted walnuts. I'm gonna take these, grind it in our food processor, and then we're gonna to toss it with some seasonings. We're looking for a good mix of chunkier chunks and finer chunks, or, you know, dust. I'm gonna go ahead and mix in some dried garlic granules along with some togarashi and MSG. To really meaty up this cauliflower fried rice, we're going to put in some of our pulled pork. We're also going to put in some scrambled eggs. We're gonna to top it with that walnut topping, maybe a little bit cheese on top. And uh, I'm hoping it's gonna be a filling lunch for us. So on a previous episode of Budget Eats, when I used the pulled pork from our bone broth bones, people were so confused. There were a lot of comments asking, where did the pork come from? If you couldn't afford that, how did you afford pork? Guys, pay attention, we're moving very fast here. I got the meat from the bones. Dollar bones, meat, bone, broth. For the pork, we're gonna take our cast iron skillet, we're going to put it over medium heat, some olive oil, and then we're gonna go in with our garlic as well as our diced shishitos. Once those get a little bit softened and golden, we're gonna go in with some fennel seeds, some six spice, some ground cumin, coriander, smoked paprika, 
as well as gochu garu and a little pinch of citron peppercorn. And then we're just gonna stir, stir, stir. And once it's nice and toasty, we're gonna add in the pork. Everything's going to marry together. I want the pork to get a little bit crispy, a little bit golden, a little bit dried out. Not like sawdust dry, just like crunchy dry. For the bigger pieces of pork that became a little too unwieldy, I just went in with scissors and chopped them all up to the desired size. If at any point you notice that your pork is sticking to the bottom of the cast iron and you don't want it to burn, turn your heat off, lay your meat over that crusty area and let it sit for about three to five minutes. The moisture from the meat will rain down onto that fond and then after five minutes, you can scrape it all up and get that flavor out of the pan. And towards the end, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of steak seasoning to taste just to make sure that we have a salted pork. Not salty, salted. Once we start seeing some golden, almost borderline charry bits, we're good. We're going to transfer the pork out of the pan into a plate and then we're gonna make our scrambled eggs. Let's admire how clean this pan looks, huh? Who needs a nonstick when you have cast iron? We're gonna scramble three eggs in a bowl until they're well mixed, then slide them into the pan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the peppers are getting to me. And then we're gonna slide the eggs into the pan. We're going to go in with our spatula and make sure all the curds are staying nice and soft. A little touch of salt goes a long way here, so we're just gonna season it very simply with salt. For our actually cauliflower rice, I'm gonna go into the pan, medium heat, tablespoon of olive oil. We're gonna go in with some garlic, as well as some soybeans, the soaked ones, raw. We're gonna let those get toasty, and then we'll dump in our cauliflower. To really make sure that the cauliflower has a good chance of getting crispy-ish, we're going to be adding the cauliflower in batches. My cast iron pan is fairly small. I don't want everything to be crowding up on each other. It also increases probability of all the little tiny kernels steaming together, which I do not want. I want crispy. I'm feeling very angry today. Anyone else? Once our cauliflower looks nice and toasty, I'm gonna turn the heat off and then we'll fold back in our pork and eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and top it with a little bit of cheese. I'm thinking maybe we can crush some of those leftover kale chips on top, as well as some parsley. A little bit of our walnut topping. This is quite possibly the weirdest fried rice I've ever seen or made or tasted. I'm so excited. I feel the love of the universe today. On my first bite, I got a piece of cartilage. It's delicious. Aaron. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so overcome. Aaron, lunch. <laughs> so this is uh, the meal that's currently making you cough your guts up? You know, <laughs> my spice tolerance is nowhere near your god mm -hmm. level. Just give me a break. Okay. Let me know how you think it tastes. So it's a low carb fried rice. Mm-hmm. It looks beautiful. I love the colors. This is great. Very positive feedback so far. Um, Are you meta commentating on your own feedback? Positivity? This? 9.1. 9.1! Mm -hmm. Wow! Yep. I wasn't expecting that from you at all. Mm -hmm. Because your favorite thing about fried rice is the oily, crispy, crunchy yes. goodness. But the flavors in this are just so great. Mm. So uh, despite the gochugaru and the shishito peppers and the black pepper and everything else, not spicy enough for you. That's all. Dude, this is okay. Thank you. I love the nuttiness of the kale. I taste the kale's nuttiness more than I taste the walnut's nuttiness, which is insane, but delicious nonetheless. The MSG from the walnut mixture is coming right through. The togarashi, nice subtle sesame kick with that chili pepper hint of spice. The cauliflower is soft and tender. The beans are tender, but still got a little bit of snap to them. And the tender, tender, tender pull apart pork meat bits are just absolutely delicious in there. This one is definitely a winner. For dinner, I think I wanna use up these coconut milks. Maybe not all of them because they're quite fatty. Naturally, when I think of coconut milk and savory applications, I think curry, which is pretty perfect because I still have some leftover pork from our lunch and I still have cauliflower and I still have a lot of walnuts. I also have those bell peppers. When I bought those bell peppers, I thought we could make some stuffed peppers. 
Now I'm thinking we can make some cauliflower coconut curry stuffed peppers. I'm gonna go ahead and chop these florets into little tiny baby florets so that we can make sure they fill into our peppers with no problem. I'm also gonna take these walnuts and food process them into little choppy bits as well. To make our curry curry flavored, I'm gonna be using this Thai green curry paste along with this very old, very frozen jar of lime leaves. I don't remember how old these are, they still smell very good. And then to really punch up that curry flavor, I'm gonna go in with some fenugreek seeds as well as some black salt. These two make it just curry heaven. Before opening your cans of coconut milk, just make sure that you're shaking them super well. This ensures that the cream that's separated to the top will get incorporated into the rest of the cream and you won't have like a thick layer of delicious creaminess on top and then very watery milk on the bottom. Just shake it, trust me. So to make our curry, we're gonna go ahead, use our cast iron skillet again over medium heat a drop of oil, and then we're gonna go in with our garlic and our shishito again until they're golden, stir, stir, stir. I'm gonna add in the lime leaves along with the walnuts and let the walnuts get a little bit toasty. We don't want them burnt, just toasty. Then I'm gonna go in with our curry paste and the fenugreek. I'm gonna stir those around until the paste is evenly distributed and the seeds get a little bit toasty. Once everything is dry and toasty, go in with the cauliflower along with our black salt, our coconut milk. I like to let my coconut milk get a little bit caramelized on the pan, let it dehydrate a little bit, let it get gooier, stickier, toastier. Then we're gonna add in as much bone broth as you'd like, and then we'll toss in our pork. In the meantime, we're gonna carve the tops off of our peppers and preheat our oven to 375. Moist, a little bit liquidy and saucy, but not at all sloshy. To trim the peppers, I like to go around the top, leaving a tiny little bit of a curved edge on top. And then once I have it cut all the way around in a full circle, I like to push the stem end into the peppers to break that membrane connection. I like to keep the tops just for a little presentation, but I also like to trim away the seeds because they're just, they're not, they're not very good eats. If your peppers are even on the bottom and they can stand on a plate without falling over, great. But if you have a pepper that's a little bit lopsided and it's probably gonna topple over and spill all of your contents, then go ahead, use a sharp paring knife and just start trimming off a little bit of the bottom without cutting any holes into the pepper. This will level off your bottom portion of the pepper. Alternatively, if you don't wanna risk puncturing your peppers, you can just use a smaller baking dish that will hold all of your peppers together very cozily. This way, they won't really topple unless you shake them like this. Don't shake them like this. Go ahead, take out your lime leaves because they're very tough and you don't want them in your bite and then fill up your peppers. We're gonna pour a little broth in there to help the peppers steam. I'll see you in an hour-ish. I'm gonna take a nap. Goodbye. And because you know that I hate baking just one thing when I turn the oven on, I also threw my remaining bones from the broth making process into the oven to roast for an hour. And guess what? They're like bone snacks now. They're like bone chips. They're so crispy. They're edible, guys. This is a bone chip. Are you ready for this experience? Oh my God, what even is this? I'm just gonna say right now that yes, this looks like a graveyard and yes, most people would not eat this, but like, why not? It's infinitely snackable. Aaron, yeah, you want a bone chip? <laughs> I started coughing just looking at these. They look like it a graveyard, like right? You it's hot, ash. be careful. Uh, Pick a I'm small bite. Take a tiny one, cause I'm scared. Okay. Is this safe? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll see. Well. What do you think? I think we might find out in 20 years if we get cancer from that. Okay. Uh, but uh, Worth it. Good luck. Thank you. Wait, does it taste good? It's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, if you know the answer to Aaron's question about whether or not we're going to get cancer 20 years from now from these, let me know down in the comments below. Now for our main entree, or rather for our entree, Entree? <laughs> we have our curry stuffed peppers. 
I'm a little scared that I oversalted these again, but we'll see. They look quite wrinkly, quite tender, and they smell pretty damn good. We're gonna top them with our remaining walnut topping from lunch today, as well as a little bit of parsley, you know, brightness, color. We love this visual appeal, don't we? So superficial. He's a wrinkly boy. Hi, June. Hi. You Did may... you make another delicious treat? I don't know. It might be too salty, but it is a stuffed pepper, which you claim to hate. But you're so talented, I might like this one. It's very juicy. Yes. Juicy. Okay, I do need to cut it. Do you know how to use a <laughs> fork like a shovel? There you go. I'm a big boy. Debatable. Hmm. Okay. I was a little scared because you kept saying you felt like you oversalted it. Didn't but I'm not picking that up yet. It smells good, no? It smells great, yeah. The filling is, is great. I feel like the filling could be addition in and of itself, you know? Do you still hate stuffed peppers? No. Yeah, I think this one's good. It's so juicy! The filling, the filling is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. This is another example of good food that's low carb because it doesn't remind me that it's low carb when I'm eating it. It's just good food on its own. I think after eating most of the pepper now, mm -hmm. I do see how it is pretty salty. I'm not sure it's over salted, mm -hmm. but it is quite salty. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this a 8.2. Okay. A really big downfall from lunch you know today. <laughs> June, why do you keep asking me for my opinions? The internet loves to hate you. Okay. Well, we do anything for the likes and the hate. Joke's on them. I love to be hated. I think I definitely could have gone a little bit lighter on the curry paste. I didn't realize how salty the paste was on its own, and then I added that black salt. My mistake. This week has not been a good week for our blood pressure, but you know what? We'll recover. Or not. Maybe we'll just die, and this will be the last episode of Budget Eats. <laughs> but I will say, the pepper is super, super tender. But it's not like slithery. Mm -hmm. um, That's another thing. You did a good job of roasting it, so it mm -hmm. isn't slimy. Mm -hmm. That's my main problem with a lot of stuffed peppers is they turn out slimy. It's got good structural integrity, but it's tender. It's not crunchy. I think one hour is the magic time. The filling is pretty spicy, a little too salty, but I like all the textures within it. The cauliflower is a nice little soft bump. The walnuts are a little bit more of a bite bump. I don't know where the pork went, but the pork is in there somewhere. And it's beautiful. Can we appreciate how artistic June's meals always are? Even if they taste like shit, as they so, so often do, they're still really art. <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. I think it's pretty on target, 8.2. I'll agree with that. Give yourself some credit. I try to be All right. tough but fun. I will. Grade. I'll give myself an 8.5. Okay. We're gonna go drink lots of water. We're gonna try to get some sleep and I'll see you tomorrow. Hi guys, welcome to Friday. It is gloomy outside and uh, I'm kind of enjoying it, you know? Inside out. For meal number eight, I think we have a lot of eggs and we still have a lot of bone broth. So I'm thinking egg noodle soup. Now you might be wondering, what is egg noodle soup? And I'm here to tell you that you can make noodles out of eggs, and then we're gonna put those noodles into broth. Hence, egg noodle soup. The idea of egg noodles is inspired by a Korean dish called japchae, and it's basically a potato starch noodle dish served cold with lots of little additions in there. There's often a little bit of blanched veggies, mushrooms, meats, toss in sesame oil, a little bit of honey or sugar, and then soy sauce. However, my favorite part in that bowl of noodles is often the strips of egg. I guess if you try hard enough, you can noodle almost anything. We still have a lot of garlic. I peeled all of them. And uh, we're gonna be eating all of these today. We're gonna be so healthy, guys. I'm thinking we slice up a lot of those garlic and then we can put it in a pot and fry them up into chips. You think this is enough to keep away all the evil people in my life? 
In my cast iron pan over medium heat, I'm just going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil and then I'm gonna throw my garlic all in one layer and then I'm gonna let them get golden. Once they turn a little bit of color, I'm gonna flip them, shake them, and just try to keep moving them until they get a little bit crispy. Once you see slight goldening happening, it's really important that you turn off the heat because the carryover heat will continue cooking the garlic chips until they are deep brown, at which point they will start to turn bitter. So pull them before you think you need to. This is the perfect specimen. And then in that same pan, after I take the garlic out, I'm going to put in some shishito peppers, soybeans, and I'm going to tossy toss with a touch of soy sauce. Now, soy sauce is not exactly low carb, but we'll be using such a small amount of it that I think it'll be okay. Let me know down in the comments below if you disagree. These are going on a medium high heat. I'm tossing, 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 stirring, 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 and waiting for everything to develop a little bit of char. And then I'm gonna take it off the heat and combine my soy sauce into it until everything's evenly distributed. For these noodles, I'm gonna be using six whole eggs plus two yolks. One, I really want that yellow color, and two, I think more yolks give the noodles a little bit more of a denser consistency, which means slightly more bite. Whip it up with a touch of salt and a teaspoon of togarashi for flavoring. I'm going to cook that very thin omelet until the edges start to peel away from the pan, and then I'm going to try to flip it very gently. The top of your egg pancake should look pretty dry to the touch. It shouldn't look like it's still jiggly. Once that surface is pretty much matte, we can flip it. Ideally, I wouldn't have this much color, on the bottom side, but you know what? It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Once you flip the pancake, the other side is only gonna take about 30 to 45 seconds or so. We're just trying to dry off that top completely, and then we're gonna transfer it to our cutting board, let it cool, we're gonna roll it up, we're gonna slice it into noodles. Remember when I said earlier you don't need a non-stick skillet? Well, you know, sometimes it's useful, but like, only if you want perfect looking egg noodles, which I don't, obviously cares. In the meantime, while our eggs are cooking, I'm going to put in a pot all of our broth that's left over. I'm also going to be including some of our leftover chicken heart broth that I had. I'll be grating some raw garlic into the mix. It'll cook as the broth heats up and we're going to keep it simple today because uh, save your energy when you can. For a little bit of visual and textural intrigue, I'm going to be slicing up our remaining massaged kale. I make garlic chips. What do you think you have there? The food of some kind. <laughs> I think you said something yesterday about using noodles, or no, using eggs as noodles. Yeah? Do yeah. they look like noodles? They do. Okay. Those are infinitely better than zoodles. Mm. I don't know why eggs haven't been used as a low carb noodle. They it's have. It's a much better idea. Who did you steal this idea from? A Korean dish called japchae. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, I was about to be like I don't know how to pronounce it. What'd you Those get? Those garlic chips are intoxicating. There's more if you want on the cutting board. Mm -hmm. When I first saw this dish from afar, I didn't see the soup in it and I thought it was a salad. Mm -hmm. I think this is great as both a soup or a salad, honestly, mm -hmm. because everything individually is really good in here. And is this the last of the meat scraped off the bones? There's still more. I'm, I'm trying wow. to see if we can eke out a ninth meal. Do you think I can do it? I know you can do it. <laughs> June making food with leftovers is like Zeno's paradox. She can always squeeze a little bit more out of it and never reach the destination. I will give this a perfect mm -hmm. nine. Oh. <laughs> you just made me drool. <laughs> I think these noodles are delicious. The egg noodles are buttery. They got a little bit of a bounce and springiness to them. The overly toasted parts really adds like a nuttiness to the egg profile. And then soaked in that broth, it really stands up to all the flavors that's already going on in the broth. What else? The pork. I mean, leftover pork is always delicious, wouldn't you say? Yeah. The yeah. meat in here is really 
it's on it's on like the fifth level of flavor Ooh. because it's been like you know over and over cooked yeah i think all the flavors are fantastic the garlic chips combined with the grated garlic in the soup combined with just the remnants of garlic ghosts past from all of our leftovers is like quadruple million garlic i'm gonna give myself especially considering that we really pretty much only used broth and eggs for this and everything else was left over, a 9.5. I truly think I exceeded my expectations. And that's that's because I kept them low to begin with. Do you want to try one? These look great. Good thing everybody's wearing masks these days because uh, nobody wants to smell us. Wear your masks, folks. Otherwise, we'll come after you with garlic breath. And breathe on you. All right, I think it's time to see if we can scrounge up a ninth meal out of all of these things. In addition to all of our scrappy bits of leftovers, in terms of raw materials, all we have left are walnuts. We have toasted and untoasted, a can of coconut milk, three eggs, plus those two egg whites that I separated earlier. We got about a cup left of cauliflower and a pretty good amount of burrick cheese and some parsley. Is it crazy of me to think we can do a low carb crepe wouldn't that be good we can put all of our leftovers inside the crepe i would i say some of those so we have cauliflower we have eggs we have walnuts and we have coconut milk what if i just threw all of those things into the blender blended it up and see if we can cook off that batter into crepes we have the eggs, so there's some elasticity there. We have cauliflower, so there's some structure there. We have walnuts, that's fattiness and flavor. And maybe I can soak up some of that coconut milk too. If I let it sit long enough, will it be a cohesive thing? We shall see. If I succeed in making those crepes, we can give all of these leftovers a home. Just wrap them up and eat them. Kind of like how we did in the vegan episode. That worked out pretty good, I think. Experiment time. Going in with two egg whites cup and a half of cauliflower, one cup walnuts, can of coconut milk, maybe two tablespoons cheese. Let's see. Oh my god, that smells so good. Pretty runny consistency. Obviously there's raw eggs in here. I do not recommend you doing this, but I'm gonna do it because science for you guys Mild. It's very coconutty. A little bit of that tannic skin from the walnuts are peeking through at the end with a little bit of bitterness. For the most part, I'm not tasting the cauliflower. It's mostly just walnuts and coconut that I'm tasting right now. Now I know I should probably wait for this to sit a little so the walnuts can get a little bit hydrated and the whole thing would be a little bit more cohesive, but I just really want to see if this will cook or not. So let's try one. Here is our sad little pancake. It's very porous, it's very fragile, and it's very soft. I think there's way too much liquid and fat in here, and I really need some sort of a glue to hold it together. But at this point, we don't have anything starchy. I'm pretty much out of ingredients, except I guess I could keep adding more eggs in here, but let's give this a taste first. It smells really good. It smells like toasted coconut. Mm, really soft and mushy, but really nice and nutty. Mm. Um, this is my failed attempt at a remaining ingredient pancake. It's very soft, it's very fragile, and it's very coconutty. Is it gonna oh. make you gag? Uh-oh. <laughs> I forgot to mention that Aaron hates coconut, so oops. Okay, to try to tamper with the coconut heavy taste, I think I'm gonna pop in some of these shishito peppers. I'm probably also gonna pop in our roasted kale to kind of just, you know, eke out that overwhelming coconut taste for Aaron. I want this to be something that he can try to eat. And while we're popping in all our greens, I might as well go in with our parsley leaves as well. Let's whiz it up, fry up another one, see how the structure is, and then maybe we'll have to add in some more eggs. Technically speaking, I used the same amount of coconut milk, one small can, in yesterday's curry, so, 
if I just add enough flavors to offset that coconutiness, maybe it'll be okay. Maybe. We are nice and green. What do we think it's saying? Me too, bud. Me too. Nope. This does not bode well for me or meal number nine, but we might as well give it a taste, right? Hmm. Okay. The coconutty taste is like 80% gone now because what's up at the forefront is that slight toasty fartiness of kale. Not bad. Tastes really healthy for you. Tastes like a bougie millennial girl's salad twirled up with egg whites and walnuts. Can I just say I miss carbs so much? <laughs> I think to help the texture along, I'm just gonna start cracking eggs into this mixture and see if it holds together better. But for now, I think the flavor is on a much better track than before. I also just realized that another potential problem is that the Vitamix is such a high powered blender that every time I turn it up to high, it's aerating the mixture, which means that's why we're seeing all those little tiny fluffy bubbles inside. It's making that structure super airy, which means harder to flip. My bad, should've just used a whisk. Bubbles. All right, guys, you know what? Worst case scenario, we're just gonna eat some very coconutty, soft, scrambled eggs. Failure. Tastes like failure. I kid you not, I'm starting to get a stressed stomach ache from this. Guys, life without carbs is so hard. Like, life is already hard. Don't make it even harder for yourself by not having carbs in it. All right, folks, to this bowl of disaster, we're gonna grate in some garlic. I'm gonna add in some goju garu. I'm gonna plop in my two eggs. We're gonna whisk, 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 and we're gonna hope for the best. And this is it. This is my last attempt. This is everything I got. Fingers crossed. It's a pancakey thing, cohesive, it's not falling apart, and I feel like it could hold as a wrap, although it is kind of breaking. Ooh, that structure is uh, very interesting looking. I think it probably has to do with the fact that there were a lot of egg whites in here to begin with, and then we whipped it super hard in the Vitamix and incorporated all that air into it, so it's almost like sponge. Mmm, okay. Mm-hmm. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add about a half teaspoon of baking powder in there to help it lift a little bit more. I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of dried mushroom powder just to give it that extra, oh, you know what? Oh, let's put some MSG in there, yes. While the pancakes are cooking, I'm gonna be putting all of our leftovers and scraps on a plate, reheating them so that they're ready to go when these wraps are done. And then maybe Aaron will choke one down and give me a two, a negative two, or just, you know, zero because like coconut. On our leftover carousel, we have our soybeans, we have some eggs, we have our fried rice, we have our curry, we have chicken hearts, and we have some pork. It all smells pretty good. We've also got the last bit of our massage kale, the last bit of our cheese. We got some of this walnut pesto left over. We got some of this walnut topping with our togarashi and our MSG. And last, but certainly not least, our garlic chips. I think these might be the saving grace of all of us. Aaron, yeah. would you like to try this disaster of a final meal? Absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So I have some pancakes over there. Yeah. You can use them almost like injera in Ethiopian cuisine just to grab these leftovers. Nice. I don't think the pancake itself is gonna hold, so if you just want to use the bread to like grab as if as if we were eating I like will tali. Do as the chef suggests. Is a low-carb diet for you? No. That's what I want to know after all this week. Do you think you could do it for no. the rest of your life? Never. In a million billion lifetimes, no. Is there a coconut? Mm-hmm. I don't taste it, so it's fine. You don't taste it at all? Mm -mm. 
I think it looks quite beautiful when I have it laid out on the plate, you know? It almost looks like, um... I mean, it does remind me of when we eat Ethiopian food. It's mm -hmm. just like little plops of flavorful stuff, and then you have the bread that you break, and then you grab food with. I feel like every time we do one of your special weeks, we mm -hmm. end up with just a mixed plate of... It's leftover day, left. man. Yeah, but you always make the leftovers so presentable. Ooh. Did you try the cheese with the walnut powder yet? And a little bit of kale? I did. Yeah, I just ate that bite. I love this powder. kale, walnut powder, good. and cheese. Which pancake are you on now? I don't know. Maybe like five. Wow. They're pretty light because they're just what? The egg and coconut milk? Mm hmm. So I think this week has not made me any more interested in doing a low carb lifestyle. <laughs> Agreed. But it has showcased your creativity. And the fact, it's not just that you made a low carb week, it's that you did it on 25 bucks. That's true. Mm -hmm. I sure did. If you don't count the spices and the oil, which we're not counting, guys. Don't at me. I'm tired. I'll at June for you. <laughs> hey, June! Oh my god! <laughs> You're fired. Nothing here has, like, blown my socks off. Uh huh. Or my butt off. Or my face off or any other part of my body off. I think the closest that came this week that really was just, you know, a flavor gasm uh -huh. was the pork soup. Uh, if, Is that your favorite? Yeah. I could eat low carb food all the time if it was all like that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like I said, that dish would just be better with noodles. Mm -hmm. Carbs make food better. All right, chef, do you have a grade for me for this hodgepodge? Yes, for the final hodgepodge, I give you a 6.66. .66. And that's because June is devilishly good at cooking. I, I was expecting a two, you know, considering that you spat the first batch of this out in okay. the sink. I give you a two for this because you are good at cooking too. Or no, you are too good at cooking. That's what I should have said. <laughs> As far as this week's meals go, I think my top three are the kale cups. I absolutely adored those. Like Aaron said, they're basically a salad, but they were just so fun to eat, and I love the textures and the flavors and the contrast and everything. I also really love the cauliflower fried rice with the pork and the eggs. I think it was just a great bowl to sit down to and uh, sit down too. We don't sit. Really nice and really wholesome, and it felt like a complete meal, and it felt like it wasn't too strenuous to make. I think the third place goes to the egg noodles that we had today. I think the soup and all the additions on top just made it perfect. It was almost like ramen, but not at all. <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Budget Eats. This low carb lifestyle is not for me and kudos to all of you folks who can do it. I know a lot of folks love the health benefits of eating low carb or eating keto, but for me, I just love sugar too damn much. I am made of sugar and I will always be made of sugar. Having said that, I completely enjoyed this journey because man, spleen, who knew? Spleen is awesome. Everybody should try spleen. And also I loved eating my bone chips. I don't know if I'm gonna get cancer in a few years, but you know, like I'm probably gonna get cancer anyway in a few years. So it's like, might as well get it over with, right? Spleen is my new favorite meat. Yeah, me too. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching and let me know down below if you have an idea for the next Budget Eats. What crazy dietary restriction should I follow through next with my 25 bucks? Or is it just, you know, 10 bucks next time? In the meantime, stay hydrated, take care of yourselves, and please get some sleep. Get it however you can. Just go, go sleep right now. Goodbye.